Hey folks, my name is David Falzgraf, and I'm the founder and lead sound designer here at SundaySounds.com. We're really excited to be able to provide you with high quality song specific main stage patches for today's most popular modern worship songs. Using our main stage patches, you can nail these songs live, even if you're not using backing tracks and you're the only keyboard player. The great thing about all our main stage patches is that you don't need any expensive third party plugins or software. You just need Main Stage 3 running on any modern Mac computer, and you can use these patches live. We've designed this patch at the original tempo and in the original key of the song, but there's a video tutorial on the product page that you can check out after you've purchased the patch if you need to do the song in a different key or at a different tempo than the original. To make things even easier for you, we've pre-mapped this patch to our Sunday Keys Main Stage template. So if you have Sunday Keys, you can just drag and drop this patch right into your concert and it will be pre-mapped to the extra section. There's no setup work or mapping required. Just drag it in, you're ready to play. Now, I'm gonna hand this over to Ryan, who's gonna walk you through the various sections of the patch to teach you how to use it to nail this song live. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, Ryan here from Sunday Sounds. Now, before we actually get started playing this patch, I just wanted to talk about the mod wheel. And so we use the mod wheel, as we move it up and down, to move in and out between different sections of the song. So we use that to bring in and out different instruments. And so if you don't have a mod wheel, well that's actually okay. We've got a video tutorial and that's over on our website. It's gonna show you how you can set up a fader or a knob to work in place of the mod wheel so you can still maintain full functionality of this patch. Okay, so this song is in the key of G flat, a wonderful key. And so I'm assuming a lot of you guys are probably gonna be transposing this. And so like David stated in the intro, make sure that you check out that video on transpositions so that you can uh, get that taken care of. Now, this song has a few chords. I want to show you the general places that we're going to play these chords because we have things like chord triggers mapped. So it's important that you play these chords in the correct place. Now, when I talk about playing chords, we're actually going to just be playing either single notes or octaves in the left hand. We're going to let the chord triggers fill in the other notes. So we've got a G flat, that's our root. Now generally, we're gonna play this here. But every once in a while, there's a few parts of the song where we have to play an octave lower. And I'll make sure I point that out when we get to those parts. Now for our E flat minor, it's gonna be in this location. Our D flat is here. Our C flat, which is a B, is gonna be right here. And then we also have a D flat over F, so we're going to play the root, which is the F. And those are really the chords of the song. Now, we've actually also programmed in a B flat here. And you can use that in the bridge, if you'd like, or other places as a passing tone. It's not actually in the original record, but it's there if you want to use it. So now that we've covered our chords, let's talk about the different mod wheel positions and, and what happens when we move that around. So from 0 to 50, that's going to be for our slower parts of the song. So our slower verses, our slow chorus. As we go into 50, we start to fade up um, some pads and just some other sounds. Now, as we go from 50 to 100, that's going to be used for the bigger parts of the song. So our large bridges, our big choruses. That's going to actually fade in some synth lines, some arps in the lower range of the keyboard here. And so just become familiar with what fades in and what fades out. But in general, there's not too much of a hard and fast rule. As long as you know that 0 to 50 is for the slower parts, and then you can use that to build as much as you would like in those slower parts. And 50 to 100 is for the bigger parts, then you should be all squared away. So we actually start the song with a little pad intro. And all we're going to do is play the low octave. So we'll actually go ahead and hit that low G flat. And that sounds like this. Alrighty, we'll hold that out for a few bars, and then we come in with um, some chords in the right hand, and that's going to be for our first verse. I'm going to go ahead and play through that, and then I'll go back and break it down. And that sounds like this.
kit. So I actually started from that pad intro and then came in with a verse. Now in the right hand, I want to go over the different chords that we're using because we're actually going to use these in the first chorus as well. So for the G flat, we're just going to be doing the root and then our D flat. For our E flat minor, for the D flat, and then for that C flat, in the left hand, we're doing octaves. So we're only going to play in this lower range for that G flat in the very beginning for that pad intro. And then we're going to switch up to here and just do a single note for the G flat. And then for all the other chords, we'll go ahead and do the octaves. Now you probably also noticed that at the very end of the verse, I pushed the mod wheel up to about 50. And that's just going to build in those pads like I uh, stated earlier and get us ready to go into the first chorus. Okay, so our first chorus, I'm going to go ahead and play through that and then we'll go ahead and break it down. And that sounds like this. Okay, so we're using the same chords that we used in the verse, and then as we move to the final G flat, we're going to move up in the right hand and play that little motif. And that goes like this. Now, every time we do this in the song, we're going to go ahead and play that lower range G flat. So just keep in mind, that's when we're going to go down, and that's just going to really emphasize that point. Alrighty. One other thing to talk about is that if you don't have enough time or you, you feel like you don't have enough time to play that full line, you can actually just cut, cut it a little short so that you can get ready to go back into the G flat. So a shortened version would look something like this. And that's up to you. It just depends on how comfortable you feel with moving around. So from that first chorus, we're going to go ahead and go into our second verse. We're going to leave the mod wheel about 50% and we're actually going to play this the exact same way that we played our first verse. Now I just want to talk about the chords one more time just to maybe make it a little easier for you. And just, I don't know if you've noticed, but whenever we play these chords we always have the root here and then the fifth. And that's for every single chord. So it might make it a little easier so that you know that that part of the chord will be the same and you're just changing the note in the middle. Anyways, we're going to move from there into the second chorus. Now this second chorus is going to be a little bit bigger. We're going to go ahead and push the mod wheel up following the end of the verse. We're going to play the same chord progression. We're actually going to repeat it though one time for this chorus. And then in the right hand, we're going to do a little bit different uh, with the voicing of the chords. I'll go ahead and play it and then we'll go back and break it down. And it sounds like this. Okay, so in the right hand is really all that we're changing, except for adding the octave in a couple other times. I'm going to go ahead and show you the chords that I'm using. So for that G flat, and then for the D flat, so we're actually going to walk this chord a little bit. So the first time we hit it, it's going to be, and then right after that, so that would sound like this. For the E flat, we're going to play this. For our second D flat. And then for our C flat. And that's all you need to know for the second chorus. Now, as you probably heard though, whenever we play that motif, this time with the mod wheel up, we've got that synth backing the piano.
From that chorus, we actually go straight into our first bridge. This is going to be a big bridge, so we're going to leave the mod wheel at 100%. We're going to have the same approach, playing octaves in the left hand. And then in the right hand, we've got a little instrumental, um, not instrumental, but a, a lead type sound. I'm going to go ahead and just play through that, and then we'll go back and break it down. And it sounds like this. And so that walk down that I did here, that's actually going to be the tag. And so we'll actually repeat the bridge, that first progression, that E flat, D flat over F, G flat, C flat. We're going to repeat that. And then whenever we, do, we play that progression four times, we'll go ahead and do that tag. Now from there, we go into our third chorus. This is going to be a big chorus as well. We're just going to leave the mod wheel where it's at. We're going to play this the exact same way that we played the second chorus. Now after we play through the chorus uh, chord progression twice, we're going to have a drop chorus. And so all you have to do is hold that last chord of the chorus, drop the mod wheel down to zero, and then we're going to play really lightly, sort of how we played the first chorus, it's just so that we have a pad sound that comes through. So I'll go ahead and just play the last note really big, show you how I can drop the mod wheel down to take out some of those sounds, and then just show you a bit of how that pad would sound. And here we go. And then we'd come in and play the pad here. Now you're going to have a little bit of piano that comes through. It depends on how hard you push. That's totally fine. The, as long as the idea is that it's way dropped down. So after we come out of that dropped chorus, we go into our bridge chords again. It's actually going to start with an instrumental. And so we're going to play that same lead line that we played during our bigger bridge. But with the mod wheel down, it's just going to give us that piano sound. And of course, with the chords in the left hand as well. Now, we're actually going to repeat this. The singing is going to come in. And as we keep repeating, we're actually going to build. And so all you have to do is use the sustain pedal a couple of times to hold out the chords. Start to push this mod wheel up so that you go back in and you're going to play the big bridge just like we played it the first time. And then at the very end of that bridge, we're going to go into the tag again. So the same way that we did it before, the E flat, D flat, C flat. And then from there, we're going to go into our fourth chorus. It's actually going to be a big chorus as well. So we're going to play this the exact same way that we played our second chorus. Just those open, big voicings. And then we end the song actually right after that, and we end with a big ending. So you'll leave the mod wheel up at 100 and just stay on that G flat. So one other thing I wanted to mention is that because we've left this entire right side of the keyboard open without any chord triggers, it really leaves um, you free to play how you would like. So if you don't like those voicings, if you want to voice your chords a certain way, you're totally free to do that. This also lets you change the different parts for the bridge. So one idea might be, and this isn't in the record, but this just kind of fits the song and seems fun to do, is that you can do an ARP for the bridge. So maybe when the bridge really starts to build, you want to change it just a little bit and uh, help it build some more. So I'll just play an example of an ARP that might work over the bridge, and then just something to think about if you wanted to do something similar. So that would go like this. And so that's just optional. And so that's really all I've got for this song. Just remember that 0 to 50 is for our slower parts and 50 to 100 is going to be to build in those bigger parts. We're really excited for the rest of this album to come out. This is just the single off of Hillsong's new album, and so we look forward to making all sorts of new song-specific patches for that here in the future. 
So I'm Ryan from Sunday Sounds. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you consider adding this patch to your sound library. We'll see you next time.